Cork will play Kerry in the Munster semi-final on Sunday and I think many people will consider this the de facto Munster final here. It is knockout football which adds so much more to it. Almost nobody from the Kerry panel has been involved, you know, the last time that they lost to Cork, which was in the Munster semi-final in 2012. There was a draw in 2015. I was down at Fitzgerald Stadium in Killarney and Fionn Fitzgerald hits a sort of a speculative effort that somehow ended up over the bar and Kerry won the replay. What do you what do you think it is? What's your sense of this one? Is it because last year Cork pushed Kerry so hard and scored those three goals running straight up the guts? Do you think there's any way that Cork are primed to actually shock Kerry, who are, you know, right up there as favourites for the All Ireland beside Dublin? Well, it's not good football, shit. You know, it's Cork versus Kerry. You know, never, never say never, but. I looked at a few statistics earlier about the Cork team. You know, they have a plus 44 score difference with seven wins from seven in Division 3. Now, Division 3 and Division 1, there's a massive gulf, you could argue. You could argue. But at the same time, last weekend, we seen Cavan, who will be in Division 3 next year, beating a Division 1 team in Monaghan. So, you know, you could probably argue that on the day, you know, Cork Kerry has that feel about it. Rona McCarthy, what he's done this year is he has flooded the, the squad with a lot of new faces. He's brought in a lot of, of the under-21 squad that would have won the All-Ireland last year. So that, that would have brought a freshness. It would have brought a confidence because when you're used to winning, you know, it creates a great confidence, Shane, and a great bit of momentum within the panel. And and football ultimately is a game of confidence. And listen, Cork have always had... We, we played them in a minor match way back at the start of March in a minor challenge match up in Dublin. And I got, off the, I got out of the car in, in uh, the, the National GA Centre in Dublin and this Cork team got off the bus. And I was looking at them going like, are we playing their minors or are we playing their seniors? You know, they, they've always produced huge athletes you know really really strong robust footballers mm. but they've got a bit of class too Shane you know they've got some really good footballers the likes of Rory Dean and Paul Kerrigan the last day like Mark Collins came off the bench the last mm. day against Louth in the league and scored 1-5 you know they've always had that those, those, those footballers Cork's a massive massive county Shane massive county you know and obviously Kerry don't have the the, the, the distraction of playing hurling at the very highest level like Cork do but you know for me Cork have always been a county where you're just sort of saying to yourself, like, like what what is happening? You know, why are they not contesting every year? And maybe part of that has been maybe you know historically mental scars from from defeats with Kerry in the past. But if you actually look at it, ten years ago, you know there was a Cork team came through. They won the All Ireland in 2010. So it's ten years since they, since they won the All Ireland. They beat down in the final mm. actually that year. But that was a Cork team that had been around in 08 and 09, and you know had been knocking on the door and they had some fantastic battles with Kerry. But this team for me, Shane going in at the weekend, have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Now, Kerry will go in as massive favourites. You know, obviously Kerry's forward line, you know, Shawnee O'Shea, David Clifford, they've brought in Brosnan this year from Dr. Crooks, who's playing out of his skin at the minute. You know, we, we talked already on the show in previous weeks about the power that they have from their half-back line and the likes of Tom O'Sullivan being able to go forward. But there's question marks over Kerry defensively. And it's been made public that there's been question marks over Kerry defensively now. We see it against Monaghan that they can adapt and they can play a, a bit of a deeper line defence and they can get bodies back and they can sort of suffocate the game. But it'll be interesting to see how this weekend goes. Yes, of course, Kerry are favourites in paper, but it is Cork Kerry. It's a Cork team who are coming into the game with a serious level of confidence, you know, with nothing to fear, with nothing to lose. And, and I can see it being a very, very high scoring game. But just what you said there, I, I probably think if Cork are to win the game, they're probably going to need goals. And, and, and quite a few of them. If you if you jump back to last year when I was watching Cork come back from the quali- or the loss to Kerry and go through the qualifier series, I saw them beating Leash down in Turles and they battered them and Mark Collins was on fire, Brian Hurley was on fire, Luke Connolly then he go- he goes and scores a goal after what was it, fifteen seconds of the game against Dublin. Yep. I can't remember if that was the first half or second half, but he had a goal very, very early in one of the halves. But <clears throat> Dublin managed to completely shut down Mark Collins, completely shut down Brian Hurley. Do they, like, they have a brilliant attack, um, exciting attacking line, but can they be shut down and do Kerry have the backs to do it? Well, this is, this is the big question, and this is the question marks that have, that have come about Kerry. You know, have Kerry got the personnel to go man to man at the back? And uh, if you listen to some Kerry pundits, particularly Tomas O'Shea, who would be very vocal and very forthcoming in his views, Tomas would say, look, defensively were just not good enough, you know, and he would say that publicly. And maybe that's why, Shane, 
against Monaghan. Maybe that's why they dropped off the odd kick out. Maybe that's why they, they filtered back to middle third press and got a bit of cover on. You know, maybe that's why they, they, they set up so defensively. Maybe that's why against the likes of Donegal, you know, they were happy to keep possession for long periods of time and, and not turn the game into a helter skelter game. And you know that that's what teams want. You know, teams teams like, like that, that, that play like that. You know, that have a that have a have a forward line like Gary. Like you know, they obviously they're reliant on on, on posting big scores. But you, I think Jim McGinnis mentioned it during the week. There's got to be a balance. There's got to be a balance. Okay, so it can't just be all out attack. It can't be you know you score twenty two, we'll score twenty three. There's got to be stages of the game machine where you've got to control the game. You've got to shut the game down. You know, you've just got to take the sting out of the game because. Physically, it's just not impo- it's just impossible to go helter skelter for seventy minutes, and and I just I just do feel that Kerry have become a little bit more streetwise. I think they've become a little bit cuter. I think defensively they've become a little bit more switched on, and I think they're learning. I, I think they've definitely those last couple of league games. I know the Donegal games very very hard to analyze because you know it, it was a dead rubber, but they were going in a skein against the Monaghan team who were fighting for their lives, and they showed that they can play that way and they show that they can shut teams down defensively, you know, and I just feel that against Cork, they're not going to be silly. They're not going to be naive. They know where Cork's energy lines are and you're completely right in what you say. Cork got a dream start against Dublin last year. I remember looking at it thinking, I think there were seven, six nil up, seven nil up, I think, or seven one up, I think it was, and it gave them such a great opportunity, great foot holding the game and, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, you know, that game against Dublin last year, the young lads coming in from the under-21 panel, maybe that will just give them a bit more confidence, but I can't see past Kerry because I just don't think that Cork have the personnel, Shane, to be dealing with the forward line that Kerry have. And this year, particularly in the National League, I don't think Cork would have come up against anything. You know, well, well, it's not that I don't think, they just simply wouldn't have come up against anything, you know, as well-drilled and as well-oiled as this Kerry forward unit. I think an awful lot of this Kerry team you could probably pick at this point, Gavin White and Paul Murphy being the two wing-backs, uh, Peter Crowley probably centre-back, maybe you're looking at Jack uh, Barry and David Moore midfield. So I spoke with Darren O'Sullivan, the Kerry player, and there's an interview with him on our game today, and he was talking about the forward line. So if at the moment you're going to assume that maybe... Stephen O'Brien to be one wing forward. Sean O'Shea, this is assuming everyone's fit. Sean O'Shea is centre forward. Now Darren suggested Dermot O'Connor as the other wing forward, and you know Jack Barry would take midfield. So let's just assume that's the situation. The inside forwards then that they can pick. David Clifford, he's he's a shoe in. Then you've got the options of Paul Ganey, who was the player that stood up in last year's All Ireland final when things were going wrong. You've got James O'Donoghue, former footballer of the year. You've got Tony Brosnan. You've got Dara Moynihan. What? Who do you pick? Oh, listen, it's just I'm, I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking from a cork perspective here. It's like it's like pouring water into a sieve, and you're trying to plug this hole and plug this hole and plug this hole, and it's just physically impossible to do it. Uh, you know, obviously Clifford. You know, we we spoke about Clifford Sheen. I don't think we need to say any more about the kid. Uh, I think this lad has the potential to become anything he wants. Uh, you know, I don't think there's going to be any any danger of David Clifford becoming too big for his boots or, or developing an ego because I'm sure he'd be brought down a peg or two in, in, in that carry room but I, I just feel you know Tony Brosnan is just probably Brosnan is probably just too good to leave out at the minute his form is just it's top class you know he's come, he's come in off the back of a really good club season with Dr Crooks so it will be him it will be Clifford and then it's one other it's one other you know and, and as you say who you pick does it really matter you know if it's if it's Keeney or O'Donoghue you know and, and plus as well and I think this is the biggest thing Shane as well Cork had an impact, of course, coming off the bench with some of their long legs, some of their fresh legs, some of their athleticism. But if you're bringing in those guys, if you're bringing in a Paul Ganey or a James O'Donoghue, when the game is really stretched with 20 minutes to go and you're a cornerback and you've just chased Brosnan for about 50, 55 minutes and he's, he's maybe pegged off 1-4, 1-5 against you and you see O'Donoghue coming in or Ganey coming in, it's, it's, it's going to be a long last 20 for you, you know. So, listen, for me, it's, it's Brosnan, Clifford and one other, you know, and... and I, Take your pick. It has to be Ganey. Come on, I want you to put the neck on the block. It has to be Ganey. If you're going to win in All Ireland, you need a leader like that on the field. Mm. Yeah. So no. Well, listen, up. listen. He captained his college. He captained his college to Sigerson Cup. You know, he's displayed leadership uh, capabilities in the past. Year, and there's no doubt about it. And he's got a wealth of experience. And I, I rate the lad. You know, he's a brilliant footballer, a really, really top class footballer. And you're probably right in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going with Kerry? I'm going to go with Kerry myself. 
Well, yeah, absolutely. I can't go with anyone else. But listen, I, I think it'll be a good game. I yeah. think it'll be a good game. I think it'll be an open game. And, and I'm hoping for a really, really good spectacle.